Okay, so now that we've seen the differences between the different years of turbocharged on the Duramax, let's talk about power. You know, everybody wants to know which one's better, which one's the best. You know, if I want to make power, if I want to tow, if I want to do whatever I'm doing with my application, what is the best turbocharger? This is one of those deals where there's no cut and dry winner. Okay, the, the LB7 I love because it's simple, it's reliable. I can count on it to do the same thing. I can count on that wastegate to open at the same boost pressure every time. I, very little troubleshooting, very little in the tuning that can go wrong, um, you know, compared to these variable geometry style. 530 horsepower, 550 horsepower with major airflow upgrades. Um, that is high flow inlet air horn, downpipe, all the goodies. Okay, so you're, you're mid to low 500s on an LB7 turbocharger. Same goes for an LLY, LBZ, LMM turbocharger. Rarely will you see one break 530 rear wheel horsepower on this dyno. Compressor size indicates, but we haven't verified on the dyno yet, that this LML is a similar situation. Okay, so how much air you can flow uh, through that compressor wheel at atmospheric pressure is, is essentially the limiting factor. So we can only get so much energy out of this turbine side, and we can only drive this compressor so hard before it either explodes or just starts moving hot air. That is, the air mass that it's moving does not appreciably go up for the boost number. Um, so let's talk about measurements a little bit. You start reading the forums, you start looking online, you're going to hear a bunch of different millimeters, uh, compressor sizing, turbine sizing, that kind of stuff thrown around. So let's talk about what that means. On the compressor side, you have a couple of different measurements. Actually, we'll go with three. So you have the bore size. So when you enter a sled pulling class, you have the bore. You might have a 2.5 class or a 2.6 class. That would be a, a 2.5 class would be a class that's checked with a 2.505 slug. If the slug gets hung up in the bore, then it's a legal turbocharger. If the slug can, can pass to the wheel, that's an illegal turbocharger. That measurement is done on the bore of the compressor cover. Okay, then you have guys talking about wheels. Well, it's got a 63 millimeter wheel. Now there's a clearance between the wheel and the cover, so the measure of the cover is not going to match the measure of the wheel. There's a stock LLY wheel, about 60 millimeters. Okay, so you hear a lot of upgrade turbochargers, 63, 68, 66. That would mean that this inducer section of this compressor wheel is larger. There's two measurements on this compressor wheel. You have the inducer and the exducer. The exducer would be the widest measurement possible on the compressor wheel. You don't hear many guys talk about that. It's not a common measurement. In order to make power on one of those bigger compressor wheels, you need a bigger turbine side, okay? And that's where the limitation of this uh, variable geometry setup comes in, is you can only go so big on this turbine before you start to run into clearance issues on the vanes. This turbine's a 63 millimeter turbine. Uh, 63 is the exducer. That'd be the, the last piece of the exhaust gas touches before it goes out the downpipe. That's a well-matched setup. Anytime you have a really big compressor wheel and a small turbine, you have a, a surge-prone turbocharger, a turbocharger that, need, charger that needs a lot of back pressure to make power. Not a good idea, okay? Um, square or over square on the turbine side, meaning the turbine is larger than the compressor wheel, works out really well. Let's show you the veins a little bit. Okay, so these vanes are constantly moving as you're driving the truck. They're constantly adjusting to get a more or less velocity on the turbine, more or less boost or drive pressure, okay? Um, this is a really cool deal because it can make a, a larger turbocharger spool up quicker or it can give you that uh, engine braking on D-cell. When you hear vane position reference, you'll hear it in percentage, so zero to 100%. 100% would be completely closed vanes and they're not completely closed. There is some clearance there, but that would be similar to this, where there's very little room between the veins for exhaust gas to flow. As this unison ring moves clockwise, you can see that the veins open up and there's a lot more room for exhaust gas to flow. When you're starting off, you're going to start at that fairly closed position. You immediately hit the throttle. As boost builds and exhaust gas volume or exhaust gas mass uh, climbs, you're going to continue to open the veins, and as you get to get to full throttle, the veins may settle just a little bit over zero, so between zero and 30 percent, zero and 40 percent. Just depends on the shape of the veins and what your turbocharger. 
kind of a cool setup. We see most of the problems with these variable geometry turbochargers stem from um, problems with this mechanism failing. So common failure modes would be truck blows a head gasket, pushes coolant all through the system. You can imagine what hot sugar water does to all this. Um, makes them stick pretty good. The mechanism failing, the sensor failing. Someone leaning over the, uh, well, you can see it on this one. Yep. Someone leaning over the sensor and you know putting their elbow or uh, wrench on that or whatever and, and breaking that sensor wire. So fairly common, common failure stuff on these. Take them apart, clean them up, check them out. Okay, so in summary, the LB7 turbocharger is its own baby. Downpipe's different, uh, wastegate operation, it's the only non-electric. 04 and a half to 2010, a lot of parts interchange. There's a lot of similar stuff going on. They're not identical turbo turbochargers, but there is a lot, of, uh, a lot of stuff that can be interchanged. The LML is its own deal. Um, oil line routing's different, the downpipe's different, the compressor cover's different. So I wouldn't try and, try and change an LML um, back to, a, to an LLY or anything like that. I um, hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about Duramax turbochargers today. I certainly enjoyed sharing with you. Again, I'm Nick with DuramaxTuner.com. We'll see you next time.